Jamie Gilbert, uh, leader of the Greens in Harlow. When I last interviewed you in July of last year, you were a, a part, felt like a party of one. Now you've got 10 candidates in local elections. So firstly, you must be really pleased at getting 10 candidates. Yes, um, I, I think pleased would be an, an understatement. I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the support that we've had. Um, I actually remember when we, when we had that interview, I think one of the things we discussed then was um, I really wanted to get as many Greens in Harlow uh, to see that interview and get behind me and support me. Um, and that's exactly what happened from there. It's it has been phenomenal. Um, our numbers are huge now, um, support is growing, and um, people jumped at the opportunity to, to stand as a candidate. Unfortunately, we did have some issues and we, we were supposed to have 11 candidates. So now that you've got 10 candidates all across the town, from Sumners to Old Harlow, what is it you and your other candidates, and, and here you are in Mark Hall, what do you want people to think about? Um, it's a great question, actually. I'd, I'd like people to think about the cost of living crisis that we've got right now. Um, renewable energy would have been a really great way for us to have avoided this if we had invested um, when we had the opportunity years and years ago. Uh, many people and residents around Harlow that I've spoken to um, who have already had uh, solar panels installed onto their roof and things like that um, are, are already seeing the benefits of that. They're, they're not, they're not uh, having their wallets squeezed as much as the rest of us right now. And they're actually still receiving um, an income back uh, from the excess power that they're putting back to the grid. Um, so this is just um, a perfect example of why we need to be invested in renewable energy now. Um, don't get me wrong, um, the Green Party is not just about saving the planet. We have some really good policies, um, some really great ideas as well um, ta to tackle social issues, things like that. Um, we really want to have a, a positive effect on the youth system here. Um, we have uh, great intentions on trying to um, boost police presence around the cycle paths and things like that. So I think a co common misconception of the Green Party is that we are just about saving the planet, but um, it, it's far greater than that. We, we have extreme policies like any other party and we are ready to tackle many, many issues. So you've got, to, what will you gauge come May the 5th or earlier hours of May the 6th, what will you gauge as success? Um, I think to, to say what would be a success is probably um, just, just um, having a high uh, higher turnout um, in voters. We'd really, you know, local elections, we're probably pulling in about 30% of people that, are, that can vote. Um, if we can see sort of even a 10% increase and know that we are making that sort of impact, that, that would be a, a huge thing for me, um, getting more people involved in local politics. Um, and to be honest, having getting any votes at this point, um, as in, within our th first year with 10 candidates, that's going to be an achievement for me anyway. You and, and many of your colleagues were involved in the Save the Stork campaign, which you would say is still ongoing. Yep. Was there anything that residents could learn across all these wards, could learn from that campaign and those decisions made? Yeah, so uh, I'm sure lots of people are already fully aware about, about the whole thing, so I won't obviously explain too much about that. Um, what, one thing that I found quite unfair about the whole process was the consultation with residents around Harlow. Um, I would say a good 95% of residents that were asked about that um, objected to it, yet that was still pushed through. Um, it doesn't really have any um, real benefit to Harlow. Um, I've always been one to say that I was going to try and avoid slamming other parties, um, but that really gave myself and, and speaking to other residents to feel that our councillors were not looking out for the best interest of us. And, and I really hope that, that people now start to get more involved um, in the planning side, you know, consultations with developments happening around the town because uh, many people didn't know that that was happening and it's one of the reasons why, why we're going to lose one of the most beautiful spots we have in Harlow now um, to a company for uh, another county. Because I have to say I have a very busy planning page which nobody's interested in a planning application until it's their street and, thing, and I look at a lot and you're saying please be aware it could be your street next or wherever you live. Yes, exactly that. That's another thing that we, we, we're going to focus on uh, once we get some people elected. Uh, we want to have a really transparent party. Um, you know, if we could get someone within the council chambers, we are going to make sure that the whole of Harlow hears about everything. We're going to be out knocking on doors and telling them about stuff that's happening nearby their areas, you know, two years prior to it beginning, because we, we really want to make sure that people understand what's happening around town. There's a large group of your candidates just standing yes. across now outside Harlow Museum, but you all seem to be quite energized enthusiastic is you is that do you feel you're a breath of fresh air for harlow politics um well we're, we're definitely not born and bred into this atmosphere this environment um, as many local politicians are that have a lot of family members involved and stuff like that um we are working class individuals that have lived in harlow nearly all of us if not most of our lives and we all work here um, and we, we just really want a better future for all. We, we have people that feel that um, our future is being affected by choices that is out of our control. Uh, and we're just trying to make a change and we, and we really want to help people. Uh, politics sh should be about helping people. I'm not sure when it ceased to be that.